Welcome back everyone, it's Eric from Rare Candy here. Today we are back on PTCGO, continuing our Cosmic Eclipse coverage. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at a new Tangrowth deck. And so this was honestly a card I kind of overlooked. And I feel like we had a couple of comments. Uh, it might have even been on our set review video. I kind of forget at this point. But some people asked about, you know, why haven't we talked about Tangrowth? And I was kind of thinking Tangrowth, like, card probably isn't very good if like we haven't even discussed it like in our set review or anything like that so i of course had to go looking back at the card and uh had to take another look at it. and it's actually pretty interesting and that's what we're going to be trying out here today so tangrowth here of course is going to be the star of this deck and we're taking a look at for this first attack grass knot for a single grass energy is 10 plus 30 more for each energy in your opponent's actives retreat cost so I think at a glance that seems very unimpressive and that's honestly probably why I hadn't put much thought into it. I think at a glance this card looks like complete trash. Uh, but we have to remember we do have the Absol back from Team Up that can actually increase your opponent's retreat cost. And that's where this card gets, I think, a lot more interesting. Because if you get like two, three, maybe even four Absols in play, plus this... Uh, you know, all of the, the damage from all of those, it stacks up and Tangrowth is actually pretty good at two-shotting a lot of the big tag teams in the format. And of course, one-shotting a lot of the other smaller stuff running around, like some of the one prize decks like Giratina uh, in Malamar, just as an example. And this is actually one of the few decks that I've been messing with so far that actually not only does well against the tag teams, but also has a very, very good Malamar matchup in my experience. So if you guys are sick of tag teams and you want a one prize deck to play, Tangrowth actually is not too bad. So we're like I said, we're just trying to two shot all the tag teams and one shot as pretty much anything else that's gonna be a one prize deck. Uh does have another attack slam. We're really not gonna be using this, but you never know. You know, every once in a blue moon it might come in handy. But yeah, we're basically just building around this first attack here, Grass Knot. And I will point out there are two different Tangles in play or in the current format that I think are both good in different ways and so i'm just opting for a 2-2 split haven't committed to which one i like more yet but feel free to play around with this uh one is 80 hp and allows you to switch your opponent's bench pokemon with their active so that actually is pretty good has some synergy with the strategy of this deck because we have a bunch of absols in play and sometimes we can use tangle drag to you know bring up something in stall for a turn or so while we kind of get set up so it has synergy with our core strategy but then also the other one i believe this is the newer of the two uh, 70 HP, so a little bit weaker, but its first attack is half decent, toxic. Uh, they're going to be poison, and they take two damage counters in between turns for poison. So one's a little bit more defensive, one's a little bit more offensive. Again, not sure which one I like better just yet, but just want to throw it out there. You guys have some options in terms of the Tangela that you can use in this deck. So going on from there, we have four copies of Absol. So Absol, this is going to be another key component of the deck here. If your opponent's active as a basic Pokemon, its retreat cost is one energy more. So of course we want to get maybe three of these in play. I think that's kind of a sweet spot for me in terms of the amount I like having in play with this deck. So for each one of these you have down, it's basically plus 30. So if you have three in play, that's plus 90 in addition to whatever is already in their retreat cost. So Absol is going to you know help us do big damage with our Tangrowth, or you know, not huge damage, but decent enough damage with Tangrowth. Uh, one thing that's important to note though, it does only apply to basic Pokemon, so that means we're probably not gonna do too well against maybe some things out there like uh, Volcarona GX or some of the other non-tag team GXs, but nevertheless, I think most of the attackers right now in the format are pretty, pretty much like basic oriented. So up next from there, we have one copy of Ditto. This is effectively just gonna be a fifth Tangela uh, that's the whole reason we are running the ditto here. Uh, we have one copy of Pheromosa and Buzzwell GX. This is going to be an interesting inclusion in the list. Uh, playing it primarily for Beast Game GX here. So just 50, and if we take a knockout with this attack, we get an additional prize card. Uh, that's kind of the main reason we're playing this. Tangrowth is never really going to take one-hit knockouts or anything like that. And so a lot of times we're going to get things just shy of being knocked out. And uh, also Jet Punch, if we do have to start with Pheromos of Buzzle, it is a decent starter too. Um, even though it is worth three prizes, Jet Punch is a decent attack to start softening up stuff with. But Beast Game GX is the main reason we're going to be playing this thing. Uh, we have three copies of Jirachi here. So Jirachi, of course, just for that Stellar Wish ability. Very, very good card. You guys are probably plenty familiar with this. We put it to sleep. Look at the top five cards of our deck. Get a trainer card to be fine there. We have one copy of Mew. Of course, this is going to protect our bench against things like Tag Bolt GX, uh, Crossbreak GX, 
uh, Venom Shot, anything that's going to be sniping damage on our field. Uh, we also have one Mimikyu as well. It's going to be the new one from Cosmic Eclipse. It says the Pokemon GX that have any damage counters on them, both yours and your opponents have new abilities. So we are, by and large, a non-GX deck, especially one without GX abilities at that. And so with one Shrine of Punishment tick, basically everything on your opponent's field that's a GX has new abilities. Very good against like Mewtwo Mew decks or, you know, really just anything else. Uh, this actually could be good against things like Silvalli GX, and Volcarona GX, so some of those Pokemon that we don't hit quite as hard against, uh, this could be very good for. So that's gonna be it for the Pokemon line, guys. Going on to our, let's take a look at our supporters. Some standard stuff for Cynthia, for Lily, but we have a couple of other draw supporters. We have the one copy of Erica's Hospitality, so we can only place if we have four or fewer cards in hand. Draw equal to the amount of Pokemon your opponent has in play. So just a nice kind of tertiary uh, draw support that we have here. Don't really want to play more than one or two at that, just because it's a bad card if you start the game with it. But it is definitely a pretty powerful form of draw, especially in the late game, compared to something like Lily. Then we have two copies of Rosa. This is a new card I've been testing out in most of my non-GX decks. Really been a huge fan of Rosa, one of my favorite cards from Cosmic Eclipse. But we can only play it if one of our Pokemon was knocked out during our opponent's last turn. Then we search a deck for a Pokemon, Trainer, and a Basic Energy, so we can get like Shrine, Ten Growth, and a Grass Energy. Get up and running uh, right away with this thing. We have three Shrine of Punishment just to increase our damage output a little bit more. You know, our damage output is going to be a little bit mediocre with Ten Growth, or I shouldn't say mediocre. Well, yeah, I guess it, it kind of is. <laughs> On average, we're going to be hitting for around like I think 130. So Shrine is just going to ensure we can, you know, take those two hit knockouts whenever we need to. Uh, we have three copies of Switch. So there's a lot of things in this deck that have an annoying retreat cost. Of course, the Fairmost Buzzwell, uh, Tangrowth as well. And also, we play Jirachi, so we need some copies of Switch anyways in this deck. We also have, of course, two copies of a Skateboard to go with that. Those are primarily going to be for, for our Jirachis, but you can throw them on, on anything uh, with a one retreat cost. Uh, we have two copies of Reset Stamp. Really been liking Reset Stamp in this deck. We are, you know, we're really not a disruption deck, but we have a lot of disruptive elements. We make it very hard for our opponent to retreat. We have a means of shutting off their GX abilities with Mimikyu and Shrine. And Reset Stamp is just going to be another way we can kind of annoy our opponent here. So the two Reset Stamp has been feeling really nice. Your opponent shuffles their hand into the deck and draws a card for each of their remaining prizes. Uh, four copies of Communication and four copies of Netball. So this is another thing that, or another reason I think Tangarth is actually a viable card is because of Netball. Uh, you know, really our searching options are pretty bad in the current format unless you have something like Netball or Mysterious Treasure to help you out. But Netball, of course, can be very good here. Search your deck for a basic Grass Pokemon or uh, basic Grass Energy, put it into your hand. And of course, Communication. Uh, we put a Pokemon from our hand back into our deck and search our deck for a Pokemon. Uh, one copy of Lana's Fishing Rod. This is effectively going to be our fifth Tangrowth to correspond with our uh, f our fifth Tangela, if you count the ditto in that regard. Uh, but we can also get a Skateboard back, which is kind of nice. So that's why I'm playing this over something like Lure Ball, just because we can get, of course, non-Tangrowth Pokemon back, but also we can get uh, our Skateboards back with this as well. And then from there, three copies of Great Catcher to round out our trainer card. So of course, we can only play uh, play this on GXs and EXs, but we discard two cards from our hand and then switch our opponents active with one of their bench GXs or EXs. So like I said, we're gonna be two-shotting things a lot of the time with this deck, so we need ways at chasing down those Pokemon sometimes if our opponent can switch out the active spot or whatever it might be and finish cleaning up those knockouts. And then from there, just eight copies of Grass Energy to round up the list. We're a single attachment deck, guys. We really don't need too much uh, to really get going here. But that is going to be our attempt at the Tangrowth deck, guys. I'm going to quit rambling, but let's head over into some games where we'll show off how this thing looks in action, okay? All right, so let's see. We're going to call the coin flip, which we do win. Playing against Ferocity. <laughs> kind of a cool name. All right, this hand isn't great, but we do have a supporter at the very least. And like we do have Lily, but it's a turn where turn when Lily just doesn't even really get us very far. Uh, unless we can get down a Tangela, then I might go for a Lily still. Oh, yeah, we're definitely not. <laughs> um, yeah, we're just going to go for a Cynthia here. 
So we're seeing some Poiples. Not sure if this is Quagnag or if it's like Lacephalon or what. We'll have to see. So yeah, pretty unremarkable first turn, but we did ourselves down a Tangela at the very least. And this Absol is going to make it difficult on our opponent to actually get out of the active spot here. So let's see what we're going against. We're going to see a Volkner. So Lightning Energy and Nagandel. Oh, this could be uh, Reshiram Zekrom. So let's see how this is going to go. I've actually not played against this yet on PTCO out of any of the decks I've been playing. I guess a lot of people probably just haven't been able to trade for like play sets of these yet, but. So we're gonna see a lightning energy there. I actually wouldn't mind if our opponent filled up their bench. I would actually like to use this Erica if possible. <laughs> Jeez. Um, yeah, we're just gonna go for another Cynthia. So he, we've had supporters, just not, not much else in these hands. Alrighty, so we could get down the tang the tang growth, but I think we're definitely gonna get down Mew actually. I really want to protect against crossbreak. So it looks like we've prized two Tanglas. We do have Ditto, luckily. That's one of our saving graces. So I'm gonna go for Jirachi. And his hand is pretty unplayable, so we're just going to. Uh, skateboard into Jirachi, try to find ourselves at least a supporter for the next turn. And we do get Lily, so that's good. And we haven't played any of our switching methods, so we should we should still have a bunch of different ways to get out of the active spot. So a uh, bit of a slow start for the deck. We've we haven't really been drawing dev, we've just kind of been drawing awkwardly though. So Breeding Forest, I actually really don't mind that because we do not have energy right now. So we're going to see a switch from our opponent. Discarding Lysander Labs. I'm fine with that. We're going to see Welder. So our opponent has no energy in discard. That's the next thing they are going to want to do. So probably they're going to want to find Naganadel and then discard a basic energy from hand. I think that's their play to, uh, to take a knockout here. I want just to pass. So luckily our opponent's also having a little bit of an awkward uh, start here. And we do have the Buzzmosa. I really don't care too much for that right now, though. Um, I don't necessarily even want to discard it because potentially we might be able to take like, a big knockout with Beast Game. So we're just going to put this back for the moment and get ourselves a Tangrowth here. Just to play down our hand a little bit better for this Lily. All right, so we really need, I mean, do we even want to attack with Tangrowth right now? That's the thing. So we could go for a skateboard and attack with Tangrowth, but I mean, our opponent hasn't done too much, so maybe it is okay to do that. Like normally I would not want to go in until we have an additional I'm um, sure. Let's go for it, see what happens here. And I'm not going to play the Viridian, we're just going to bump it. We have enough energy in hand to kind of coast along for a turn or two. And so we're just going to go for Grass Knot. So 130, then the Shrine Tick will uh, turn this into a two shot for us, which is nice. So hopefully, you know, our opponent doesn't have too much going on. The last couple turns were a little bit awkward. Based on what they did last turn, I'm thinking we might even be safe, depending on, of course, on what they drew off their welder. They might have like a ends resolve or something like that. Uh, but here they're gonna get rid of our stadium with that reset hole. Fine by me, we have another shrine coming if they do manage to get rid of this one. So we're gonna see treasure getting rid of stamp. So yeah, if, okay, but here they're gonna go for the knock and Adele. Do they have energy though? Yeah, they have no energy in discard. So I'm actually, Kind of okay with this so they're, they're gonna need two energies on the bench here 
So we might see what Volkner for Lightning and Cherish Ball, maybe to discard uh, the Lightning with the Dene. I think that could be a play we could see. Or maybe Stadium Nav to get, like if they, if they do play Stadium Nav, they could get a, a Viridian, discard the Lightning to charging up and then attach the energy they get with uh, Viridian to take a knockout. Is it going to go for treasure? Okay. So they must already have another energy in hand already. Because if they have to two-shot this Tangrowth, that feels pretty bad. So we're going to see another Nagnadel. Question is, do they have an actual attachment for turn, though? And I guess not. So that's actually really huge for us. I think we actually might just win because of that. Yeah, so I think... Uh, we'll get an attachment on Mew. That's fine. And we're just going to go for a Grass Knot here. Yet again, 130 taking a knockout. Let's see, what do we get? Hopefully some Tanglos, because we did prize a couple. Rosa, that's actually good if we do get knocked out. And a Cynthia, so yeah, really good prizes. But if our opponent does play B-Strings, they could still actually take our return KO here. Uh, but we're going to get reset stamped right after we finally drew a supporter. Yeah, not a big fan of this hand, but we do have Jirachi, so even if they do take the return KO uh, with like B-Strings or something, we're going to be okay here. Or, I, sh I shouldn't say that just yet, but um, we're going to have options at least. Okay, just a pass, so nice. We will get down the Tangela. and a grass energy. Now, unfortunately, we're not doing much with this thing. <laughs> we're only gonna be hitting for 40. So, was that a four shot on this Naganadal? That <laughs> feels pretty bad. So yeah, if they have an attachment, they can charging up and take a knockout on us here. So maybe I actually should have gone for Buzzmosa potentially. That could have been Oh, it's just a pass though. Okay. And yep, we're just going to go for a grass knot. <laughs> so, this is not, I know, the most exciting game you've probably ever watched, but you can definitely see the strengths and weaknesses of Tangrowth in the same uh, the same match. So we're pretty bad against the like some of these evolution Pokemon, but pretty good against your tag teams and all that. So we'll just throw up Jirachi. And we're gonna Stellar Wish. Oof, that is not too good. Okay, um, it's actually a situation where I kind of wish we... I mean, we can still do stuff, but... Like we can still get off an attack, but it feels really bad, uh, nonetheless. So I really wish we would have had an energy there, because then we could have actually taken a knockout with Beast Game GX, which would have been busted. Uh, we've almost finished taking down this one single Noggin Adele. <laughs> but then watch, our opponent's just going to retreat. Oh, but here we see the Mewtwo and Mew. I'm fine with that because then, if they do go this route, we can throw down Shrine and maybe find ourselves a Mimikyu to shut this thing off. Uh, 
So let's see what route they're going to go with this, though. Okay, they have their own Mew. It's fine, I suppose. So did they have a lightning attachment from hand? Okay, but they do, they do have energy switch, so that will get them there. So uh, Mew to Mew, of course, will be able to use that perfection ability and copy the attacks of the Reshiram Zekrom, taking a knockout on us here. So we're gonna wanna find Mimikyu, I think. Or actually, we can just take a knockout with Mew, which is kind of nice too, because we can get those energies off the field. Yeah, if we can find Mimikyu and maybe a Tangela as well for this turn, that would be nice. Oh, we get Cynthia, so I do like that. So we do get Mimikyu, that's actually really good here. And we're going to get a Stellar Wish. Um, I think I'll actually just go for Lana's Fishing Rod. So we'll just get back a Tangle and make it a little bit easier to find these things. And so we're going to go for Psy Power. We're going to do one, one, and... Uh, one on the Mew, just in case we need to attack with uh, Buzzmosa to clean up this game. So we get a Tangra, that's nice, but we don't have any Tangela. You guys can see we've been struggling to find those this game. But on the plus side, we're kind of buying ourselves some time here. We have this Mimikyu, which is going to be a big thorn in our opponent's side here. So I actually kind of hope our opponent hard retreats this Mew to Mew because we can actually just bring it back up with Great Catcher. And just kind of stall that way if we choose to. I want just to pass back over to us. I'm totally cool with that. And we hit a net ball. There we go. So I feel pretty good about the spot that we're in with this deck right now. We don't really need too much else this turn, I think. So I think I'm just going to Lily while we're not taking that much pressure. Now our opponent really hasn't been doing too much, so I don't really want to reset stamp. So we're just going to side power here. And I think we're just going to put all this damage down on the, the Nagnado. I think that's like the big threat right now. So we'll have to see what our opponent's going to do here. But even if they do retreat, like I said, we have great catchers. So we're going to keep dragging that Mewtwo and Mew back up <laughs> until they can't do anything. So we'll probably see them hard retreat. Yep, that's fine by me. So how many welders have they gone through? That's another thing. Three welders, a couple Volkners. All right, so I think we're gonna go for, I mean, we're definitely gonna go for Great Catcher. Sure, that's fine. We're gonna stamp them, try to keep this Mew to Mew, like stuck in the active, if at all possible here. And we're gonna Lily. Okay, actually kind of like everything we got here other than a lack of supporters. 
And I think we go for Rosa here. Sure. So I put down another Absol, ditto. Sure, I guess we can attach. I might give, give ourselves the flexibility of attacking with Buzzmosa. So we'll just hang on to this hand for now, it's fine. And we'll just go for a Grass Knot for 130. So if our opponent cannot move this Mewtwo Mew this turn, we just win. But we haven't seen like any switching cards from him. We've seen the one switch hit the discard already. But beyond that, really not too much else. So, we're gonna see Pokemon Communication. We might see a Dedenne GX to try to bail them out of this hand. So that looks like what they are going to do. Now, the one thing that could mess up mess us up if they play cards like Super Scoop Up or something to that effect, that would be really terrible for us. But either way, I'm going to bring that Mewtwo Mew back up. <laughs> like, they think they're going to get away with uh, it being on the field. They are definitely mistaken. Uh, we also have the Dene we could bring up eventually because with the two Absols, it effectively has a three retreat, which is pretty bad for them. So do they hit a switch? That's the big question. And they did not, so we get the victory screen. I know that was a grindy game there, but we finally we finally got there. All right, so we're just gonna call the coin flip, which we do win. That's definitely nice with like a like a setup deck like this. See some Reshizard sleeves. So this could be Reshizard, we'll have to see. Um, not a terrible opening. We just need, need a supporter off of this Stellar Wish and we're gonna be good to go. So I'm just actually going to save this Tangle up for the moment. Just to give us some flexibility if we have communications or anything like that. So Poipol. This could be Dark Box, could be uh, Blacephalon, could be Rush Ram Zekrom. Well, first let's thin some cards out of our deck. I think we'll do that and sure we'll get another tangle and we can keep this other one in hand for potentially like a pokemon communication target i kind of like that and thinning some cards out of our deck in the process Unfortunately, we do not get a supporter, but we do have, at the very least, uh, you know, enough to work with for a turn. Just really hoping this Jirachi does not get knocked out. That would be absolutely terrible for us. So we'll just go ahead, attach here, and I think we'll actually just thin an energy out of deck preemptively here. Well, I guess the good thing is, if this Jirachi does get knocked out, we have Rosa, so. So, yeah, actually this hand is probably okay. Alright, so this is going to be probably Blacephalon, if I just had to guess, if we're seeing the Ultra Space come down. We'll find out soon enough. So Cherish Ball, let's see what they're going to get. Okay, so yeah, this is going to be Blacephalon. I feel pretty decent about this. The only thing I think that might give us trouble in this matchup is going to be the Naganadel. It only has a one retreat cost, and if they get on turning point turns, they can one-shot us. Uh, but even outside of turning point, like we have to four-shot them, I think it is, and they can two-shot us. So that's going to feel pretty bad. Now on the plus side, we do have Shrine of Punishment, and we do have this Tangela. So we can actually bring up maybe this to Dene, strand it in the active, if we can find ourselves Absol as well. Just to pass over dust though, I like that. So we will just go ahead, attach right here. And... I think we're just gonna go ahead and Erica's. So 
So we'll just go for the shrine. Pretty uneventful turn two, despite getting like a pretty good, pretty good reach between the Erica and the Jirachi here. So yeah, we'll just do that. So Rosa is kind of our saving grace here. Even if this Jirachi does go down, we can still kind of get back into the game a little bit here with that. So we're going to see the Naganadel come down. Uh, we might have to find our Mew. That's one thing I did not check on just yet. We probably should. Now, also, our Mimikyu could be good, too, to uh, maybe go like a reset stamp, get damage on this thing, and prevent it from using Ultra Conversion. So we're going to go for a second Naganadel GX. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Maybe their hand was like really bad or something. I'm really not sure. Do they not have energy? Like, um, I'm just kind of wondering like what's going on with this, this situation here because all they need is an energy to retreat. Okay. And there they do have welder. So are they going to start powering this thing up for venom shot? It looks like you're just getting the single attachment with it. Okay. And they're going to get beast energy down. I'm okay with that. So, and we are going to get reset stamped. I actually don't hate that. <laughs> like our hand had rose in it, but beyond that it wasn't very good. Oh my God, this hand. Well, it's not the end of the world here, but it's not really what we like to see either. But we do have options thanks to the uh, attack on Tangla. We can even bring up, like if we don't want to burn our great catcher and kind of bring up the Dene or something. Oh, well, we don't have our Absols out, so this feels kind of bad actually. But we do have Shrine of Punishment, which is gonna kind of help us out a little bit here. Okay, um, hmm, situation, I wouldn't mind if this was the other, uh, Tangela. So do we attack with Tangreth? I think we still do. Um, I'll actually just keep everything in our hand. I really don't mind if we were to get reset stamped again, to be honest. Uh, and we'll just hang on to this other Tangrowth as well. Just want to kind of conceal what we have. Keep our options open in case we do want to go for the attack on the Tangela as well. One good thing about this, our opponent has been struggling to find a counter stadium that's been helping us kind of make up some of this damage uh, we've been struggling to get on the board. Now, next turn, we are going to go on B-string turns if we do knock out this, this Blacephalon. That is something we do have to kind of worry about. I really wish we had an Absol down because then I would feel comfortable, like, bringing up this Dedenne. Yeah, we've only played the single copy of Erica, so we, we have a lot of live cards in our deck. It's just a matter of finding them. That's the issue. Can I see Heatran as well? Okay. How many welders have they gone through? That's another thing we need to keep in mind here. So three. Okay, if that's, if that's the case, I actually might bring up this Heatran here. So if that's the case, I might even... I might even just like bring it up in uh, here, but they have a welder. That's that's a bummer. So that plan is down the drain. That's for sure. Hmm. 
So we'll do this. We're going to need a good top deck, guys. That reset stamp really did us in. <laughs> the old reset stamp for six. <laughs> uh, we do have our own, so that's kind of cool at least. So we'll do that. We're going to go on Beast Ring turn, so we want to kind of take some of their options away there if possible. And also, the longer we can keep this Stadium in play, the better here. So hopefully we can get something good. We get Lana's Fishing Rod, we can at least get back a Tangrowth, and we get a Mew. Okay, Mew actually could be good here as well to prevent against Venom Shot. And actually in conjunction with Custom Catcher could be good too. And they do have the Beast Ring. How is it when they have like a 12 card hand? They don't have like, uh, they don't have a counter stadium, but when we reset stamp them to four, uh, they have what they need. Triggering intensifies. So what is our plan of attack here? We are definitely like struggling for options right now. A, we do get Rosa, okay. So before we do anything else, I'm actually gonna get Fair Muscle Buzzle out of deck. And let's see. They are out of We're actually going to go for Absol here. I don't believe they have a way to get two energies on this Dedene. So we're going to do this and I think a Cynthia. And of course a base Grass Energy to go with it too. So sure, we'll do this. We'll do that. We will launch Fishing Rod, getting back Tangrowth. And I believe we are just going to do Tangle Drag. <laughs> Our opponent's gonna love us for this. <laughs> now, if only we still had Shrine in play, that would be good, but unfortunately we did have to prioritize, prioritize grabbing the Cynthia. Your opponent's going to get down to Mew. I'm pretty much fine with that. Oh, but they, they have an actual switch. Are you kidding me? Come on now. Well, they're going to be mad. They're going to be furious probably when we play this great catcher as well. That's cute. You think the Dene is going to be out of the active spot. We'll show you. Okay, so... Hmm. I think we win just by knocking out two. Um. Like two GXs here. So I think. How many energies have we gone through? Three, four, five. Okay, yeah, I think we actually safely we get rid of one. We will bring up to Dene. Attach. Um, sure we'll get down with Skateboard just to thin out of deck. And just to confirm, they are indeed out of Welders. Let's see, what else? Um, hmm. I think they're actually out of their... Their ultra. We don't even know if they can get value out of ultra conversion right now, so I might actually just get down the Absol and just ensure that they can't do anything. Get 
And so we're just going to use Psi Power. So one, two, uh, three. That's fine. So I see they, they have three RGs in the Lost Zone. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12. Oh, they have... <laughs> oh my god. This is frustrating. <laughs> hey, they're getting more energies onto Naganadal GX. I'm fine with that. I'm going to bring up the Stadene. If that's what it takes. Alrighty, so we're gonna try this one more time. Like, the stuff on decks normally never play Switch. This is such a. This one is definitely trolling us here. Um. Sure, we'll do that. And I think this is our win condition. Just going all in with the Absols here. Question is if we get shrine, do we even are we should we go for the deck out strategy or should we just go for like actually taking prize cards? Um We'll see. And we've played only one switch. We have another counter or great catcher left, but probably won't need them. And we're just gonna pass. So they're gonna need four energy on this Dedene. So a mysterious treasure from our opponent. Hopefully they're gonna just search their deck and, and scoop. I'm hoping they just see they don't have enough energy to actually get out of this. Hey, we got the well played. Hopefully that means they're out of switches. Hey, we managed to get there. So we won in a pretty unconventional way, but uh, old Absol Control is basically uh, our game plan right there. All right, playing against B Wells 2710. What is up? Let's see, if we are going to lose the coin flip here. Hopefully we can at least have a decent little first turn. Our opponent is faced with the difficult decision of who is going to go first. They should probably pick themselves. <laughs> oh, I'm actually really surprised by this. We're getting to go first. Oh my god, this hand is so bad, though. Uh, what do we want to start with? That's the question. Maybe Mew? I really don't know what we're playing against, so it's hard for me to say. Unfortunately, I think I'm going to go for the Absol. I want to kind of protect our Tangela for the moment. That's the reason I'm not opting to uh, start with it. So we're going to go first, so no point in benching anything. I'm just going to sit on this hand for the moment. Okay, so it's going to be Reshizard. That's the case. We are going to get Mew, put that back into our deck. And grab Jirachi. So it looks like we prized in a skateboard, but we and we did prize a switch as well, which is a bit of a bummer. Now unfortunately we are gonna have to burn an energy just to retreat. And a Stellar Wish. And we do hit a Lily, thank God. <laughs> this, first turn, this first turn was about to look kind of awkward otherwise. So we'll get down Tangela. Shrine of Punishment. And we're just going to go for a Lily. Okay. It's pretty good, actually. So we'll put down Ditto. Just trying to think what else would we want in play. I don't really know if we want anything else. We have a pretty good hand from here. 
Um, well, actually, we probably should get get down the Jirachi, unfortunately. And we're just going to pass from there. We do not have a good follow-up for the next turn, so. So the question is, is our opponent going to go straight for High Heat Blast, or are they going to actually, like, Flare Starter and all that stuff? So we're going to see Poke here, so this makes me think it's probably going to be, like, Green's Reshizard and not just the... Uh, like the ability version. So we will see a welder from our opponent. Let's see where they're going to put the energy though. Okay, just one to the active. Very interesting. So maybe a little bit of an awkward start from our opponent here. And probably just a flare starter, I would assume. All right, so at least we did not get knocked out. That's kind of what I was worried about. I didn't want to hemorrhage a bunch of like cheap prizes in the early game here. Okay, so they have their Reshizard like fully powered up here. So we will evolve the Ditto, that seems good. Still a wish, Cynthia, ooh, well, yeah, we have to Cynthia, unfortunately. <laughs> And we're just going to communication, put that Tangle up back into our deck, and grab a Tangrowth. Jeez, this is not the best. <laughs> no energy, no way to retreat. So I think we're just going to have to pass from there. So on the plus side though, on this next turn, we might be able to play around the Volks and just bring up the Reshizard. Because I really don't want to play like a seven or eight prize game. I want to knock out two tag teams and that be the end of it if possible. So two welders down already, I am happy to see that. And a high heat blast from our opponent, that's fine. So yeah, I think we're just gonna promote the tank growth here. We don't have a switching method and we have a Cynthia all ready to go. Hey, nice, and we do get grass energy. It's exactly what we wanna see here. So we will I really don't want to discard much from this hand, but I think we're going to get rid of a communication. And what else do we want to get rid of? I think, unfortunately, a reset stamp as much as I would like this against what we're playing against. Um, sure, unfortunately so. We'll do that. So right now we're hitting, what, 30, 60, 90, 21, 50, 160. If we get down another Absol one. Um, I think we'll actually just bench the Tangle. That's fine. Uh, and we would have hit the Absol too. I was thinking, what are the odds we're going to get our, our other Absol here? But it's fine. We're, we're committing to the two-shot on this Reshizard. I'm assuming they're going to be able to bounce the stadium as well. That's another reason why I was like not stressing too much about the 30 extra damage here. All right, so it looks like we're going to have to knock out Reshizard plus three Volks. So how much healing do they play? That's another thing we have to be mindful of. So you're going to see the Switch and the Heat Factory, okay? So let's see, we have one Shrine down so far. And actually, if we can find another Shrine, this would be a situation where, like, maybe it would have been nice to have had the Absol down in play last turn. Uh, 
Okay, so we're just going to promote Jirachi. We have Switch, so I'm not really stressing about that too much. We'll put down the Tangrowth here. Um, what do we want to do? What do we want to do? Hmm. Sure, we'll just do this. We really need a net ball. That's, I think, one of the big things we're looking for. So I think I'll actually do this as well. Just to thin our hand a little bit here. Let's see, we do have... We do have our other shrines in deck. That's definitely good. We have one netball and five energy. So I think we have kind of decent odds of hitting an energy this turn. Oof, that's really bad. But fingers crossed, we need netball here. Ugh, we just get shrine. I mean, shrine's like not terrible because they don't bump our stadium right away. Then, I mean... It's not the end of the world, but we are just going to pass. So that's definitely a big whiff. We really need to have taken a knockout there. But ideally, we can have this shrine damage eventually take care of this Rushy's Zard for us. That would kind of make up for uh, <laughs> uh, whiffing an attack this turn. So they've already gone through their heat factory no doubt they they have to have some power plants or giant hearts in here they could bounce the stadium with but we really need them to not have that but i think game plan would be next turn if they do bounce it stamp shrine and hope that they can't uh replace the stadium again at least we're gonna see lucimine that's how i mean that is not a a greens <laughs> so that's actually huge that's gonna allow us to get some more tick damage down on this rushy's art here uh, but this is definitely the turn, make no mistake, where we have to go in and start putting on a lot of pressure here. Um, so, sure, we will do this. And we have Rosa. That's actually perfect. So... What do we get here? Definitely an energy... Probably just got another Rosa, to be honest. And... Let's see. And yeah, I think another Rosa will be just fine. Plus maybe Mew, I don't hate that. Or maybe Jirachi, I think I kinda like that. So I'll get down Jirachi, reset stamp, put him in a three card hand. <laughs> I probably feel so bad after they just got back their supporters too. Sorry, B Wells. Gotta do what we gotta do though. And so here we're just going to take a knockout with Grass Knot. So finally taking a prize. <laughs> Getting back into this game. Let's see if we can get here. Do get a switch. That's definitely good. That will allow us to do some switching shenanigans with Jirachi if need be. Acrobike. We just need them to whiff the replacements team. That's, I think, the biggest thing here. Ooh, they got rid of Giant Hearth. That's very interesting. I don't know how much energy they have left in their deck, but getting rid of Giant Hearth would have been, I think, a bit better because they could replace the stadium and still get some of their energy at the same time. So I think that might have been a kind of a big misplay on our opponent's part. I think they needed to have bounced the stadium. Maybe they have another one in hand that they're not revealing just yet. 
Uh, we're just going to see the high heat blast. If that's the case, guys, I think we're probably going to win this game. So we will promote the Jirachi here. And we will Stellar Wish. We will grab Netball. That's fine. And we are going to Rosa. We'll grab Mew, uh, Lana's Fishing Rod, and I think an Energy. So we'll attach that. Lana's Fishing Rod, since we did lose a Tangrowth, we might hit one off the prizes eventually, but... Um, I think we'll actually get down Mew as well, in case we decide we want to, like, snipe around or something like that, maybe. That seems okay. Sure, we'll do this. And go for Grass Knot. So we just need to be mindful of a Reset Stamp. That's something that could hurt us. If they replace our Stadium and Reset Stamp us, it's feel bad. Though we do get a, a Nest Ball, so that's good. Or Net Ball, I should say. So that's definitely, I think, a big turn from our opponent. This, we could still definitely lose, but we could definitely still win too. Another option we have is if we can get Buzz Mosa, we can actually, interesting, we're just going to directly promote the Reshizard. So they must have the replacement stadium, if that's the case. There's no way I think they would do this otherwise. Because they've gone through a Heat Factory, at least a one giant hearth. Two welders appears. If that's the case, guys, I think we just win. Because we can. Because we can actually beast game. Or no, no, the shrine's gonna take the knockout for us. Which is a, bu a bummer. But uh, we should be able to still have game here, I would imagine. Oh wait, actually probably not because they can promote this Megalophony Jigglypuff. So that's going to be the thing at same. They actually could still win um, because we've used our... Oh, well, you know what? We're going to make this as hard as possible, I think, for our opponent to retreat. Sure, we'll Stellar Wish. Grab Great Catcher, it doesn't matter too much right now. And come on. It's actually kind of a nail biter. Like, even though our board looks really good, we're kind of just like a switch welder away from being knocked out. Or even just like an attached switch away from, from losing. Because the uh, Volt can knock us out here. So I'm actually kind of bummed that our, um, oh, they play Manaphy, it's plus greens. Now that is definitely a little bit greedy on our opponent's part. Sure, we can just go for, what does this do, 60? So we need to make sure we promote Absol here, unfortunately. So Stamp would definitely hurt right here too. Like if they don't have the energy and switch, if they at least have Stamp that could keep them in this game. So we're going to see another Reshizard. Fire energy seems fine. But again, do they have the switch? If they have switch, they just win because High Heat Blast will do enough to knock out our Absol. But if they don't have the switch, then I think we got it. Okay, so we're just gonna put us to sleep. So, 
As a result, we can just switch, take a knockout. So definitely a really close game. Our opponent almost won this one. And we'll hit them with the well played. Okay, so Tangrowth won, but just just barely. I think we had a couple turns where we whiffed that made the game look a little bit scarier than I think it needed to have been, but um, we still pulled it off. Alrighty guys, that is gonna be it for the Tangrowth deck that we tried out today. Also guys, I have to say this card has really surprised me a lot. I've been impressed by how well it's actually been doing, especially since it was a card that, um, you know, the community, you guys actually had to remind me that it even existed. So um, it's definitely surprised me and actually has been one of the better performing one prize decks I've been experimenting with from Cosmic Eclipse. So if you guys want a one prize deck that can not only beat tag teams and also can go toe to toe with Malamar, just due to all of the Absols and all that, uh, definitely feel, feel free to give it a try. I think it's actually pretty solid. So we'll have to see if it does wind up, you know, making, you know, a footprint on the competitive scene once we get some regionals and stuff going underway. But like I said, I definitely think this is a one prizer to keep your eye on. Uh, for sure at the very least experiment with it see how it does uh but yeah guys hope you did enjoy look at this tangrowth deck if you did enjoy this content today feel free to like and subscribe and consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash rare candy tcg or by picking up some merch from our online store rarecandytcg.com it would mean a lot but as always thanks for watching and we'll see you next time